How's it going everybody? This is Travis Plot Reviews and today we're, for our first episode we're going to jump in to one of my favorite EPs of the year so far. This is the genre blending artist Gardens EP, Creature Part 2. Garden is an artist that mixes so many different genres including emo rap, 808 rap, alternative, indie, modern emo, lo-fi, just so many different styles of music. As of recording, Garden has over 1.3 million monthly listeners on Spotify alone, and his most popular song, I Think You're Really Cool, has over 20 million streams. He makes the majority of his music out of his bedroom in a small town in New York, and it's crazy to see this new wave of artists making music in their bedrooms and blowing up. I first started listening to Garden around 2017 when I was really starting to explore all of the different styles and different influences that the emo rap scene really has to offer. In 2016, I was mainly listening to a lot of rock and a lot of metal. I was also listening to Lil Peep and Nothing Nowhere, and I wanted to see more artists that were sort of similar like that. And I'm not saying that Garden sounds like those two artists, not at all. Garden is very much in a league of his own compared to really anyone else in the music industry, but those two artists help bring me to listening to other artists in this kind of emo rap scene that has really, really taken off in the last three years. I've had the chance to see Garden live on two separate occasions. The first was on his first headline tour, the Creature Tour, where I saw him at the Lizard Lounge in Lancaster, PA in November of 2019. Their opening the show was Carousel Kings and The Breathing Backwards, and there was local support from Pool and Daisies and the Anime Dessert Club. Garden put on a wonderful show. Just so much energy, so much wholesome energy that he always radiates in his personality, in his Instagram videos, in his live streams, and th throughout his music. And getting to meet him at that show he radiated that same energy. The second time that I got to see Garden was in February of 2020. I got to see him open for London Gucci Highwaters at the Foundry in Cleveland, Ohio. It was about a 250 cap and that show was sold out just like the show in Lancaster. It's a very special thing to see artists in this scene sell out shows and tours because it doesn't have that sort of importance of live music that rock or metal really does. And I don't think that's mainly a problem in the emo rap scene, more so in the entire rap scene itself. Because, you know, you don't have those live instrumentation, you don't have those drums going off. It's something that a lot of music fans seem to not understand that rap artists can put on just as good as shows, if not better shows, than people that are playing with full live instrumentation. Creature Part 2 is an EP that follows up the first Creature Part 1 that came out in 2019. Garden has released three singles from Creature Part 2, the first being Stupid that came out in 2019, second being Backup that came out at the beginning of 2020, and Alive which has been the big radio single that has been pushed since the EP's release. All of these singles really started to display a very slower, darker theme than Garden did in Creature Part 1. It almost feels a lot more like his first earlier releases, but there is something much more mature sounding than what we have heard in the past. Creature Part 1 displayed a lot of energy throughout in tracks like Creature or I Wonder that really showed the very energetic, playful, more positive side of Garden where Creature Part 2 really started to display these slower, darker themes and it just really shows the versatility that Garden has as an artist being able to tackle both parts of the sound in a way that are both still very appealing to the ear. The big takeaway that I originally took from Car Creature Part 2 is this is a sad EP. Not in a negative way or anything, but the subject matter is just, it's a downer to listen to. But I really think that that was what was intended. 
There's still energy in tracks such as Alive, which is being pushed as a big radio single, and Don't Fall Asleep, which is my personal favorite track on the EP. But certain songs such as Stupid and Backup also just display a lot of sadness and it tackles a lot more lyrically that's introspective. Feelings of anxiety and depression and guilt and doubt. I feel that Creature Part 2 tackles a lot more sad and pessimistic lyricism compared to Creature Part 1, which definitely feels much more like an older school Garden release. Garden has always kind of been a downer artist, but that's what makes the scene so good, is this relatability and this one-on-one -on -one relationship that these artists have with their fans, because when the fans experience these things like anxiety, depression, and doubt, the artists also translate their feelings give you a sense of relatability. I think Creature Part 1 as a whole mainly was hopeful or fun and fun loving where that doesn't exist on Creature Part 2 and like I said that's not a bad thing at all. I think that Creature Part 2 hits a mood right on the nose. I think it's excellent excellent storytelling and excellent songwriting the Garden is able to show these both sides of him in two releases just a couple months apart. And I think displaying one part and then the other part helps rather than making this a full album. I think a lot of the subject matter and the overall pessimism and darker instrumentals come from the fact that this EP has been named after Garden's cat, Creature, as said in the title track. This kid really named his album after his cat Dies, he smoke a lot and hides his mom feel about die Creature sadly passed away before the second EP was released And these feelings could have translated to the mood of the new EP But it also could have possibly been both sides of Garden as a person A common trend in the scene is that these artists are very conflicted between this fun-loving, carefree, energetic guy around groups of people, but also being this sad, depressed, lonely person that's alone in their bedroom. And I think Garden has this down to a science, and it's just perfect. I think Garden has set himself above his peers for having a very original style and a very original sound, unlike anyone else right now in the entire music industry. And a lot of that comes to the fact that the producing, the instrumentals are taken so seriously in comparison to the other artists in the scene that may just grab a beat from any famous producer and kind of rap to it. Garden's music seems very, very much a whole entity instead of just rapping over a beat. And I think that that is so special in the scene. And I just... I'm not, I'm trying to not praise Garden so much and not include personal bias, but I just, I, I love Garden as an artist. So as I mentioned before, I, I truly, truly love Garden's music. There's really nothing like it anywhere else in music. I love the scene of music and the majority of artists in it, and just the originality of being able to display emotion and be able to express yourself independently without the need of the traditional band music route. A lot of these artists don't have record labels, they upload on their own schedule, some even one song a week. And it's crazy because they're pumping out so much content, but Garden seems to be an artist that really sets the time to create the art that he wants to make on his own time. And it doesn't matter to him about quantity, it's more about the quality. And that's something I very much respect about Garden. He also has the ability to create a certain mood in all of his music, and songs such as Again really highlight this on the six song EP. I've personally loved Alive since first listening. I would say I'm personally more connected to Garden's more upbeat music compared to the slower ballads. But that's my own personal preference. And that's why I love artists such as Convolk, Nothing Nowhere, Shinigami, Little Lotus. But I also love ballads, too. And I think Garden adds his own little flavor of the traditional ballad, especially in the scene. My first issue with Creature Part 2, whenever I was first listening to it, was I was a little worried that everything was kind of blending together. That everything was sort of sounding the same. 
I was also primarily expecting these bombastic, very hyper anthems that we expected from Creature Part 1, and we didn't get that at all. But as time went on, and I continued to listen to Creature Part 2 for what it is rather than what I was expecting, I learned to love it more and more with each listen. And that's what I really look for in music, is that you, it has the ability to grow with you. With releases like this, I slowly fell more and more in love with it it's with each listen. And you develop your own personal connections to the songs that are created. And that's what creates Album of the Year Contenders and EP of the Year Contenders. Where Creature Part 1 may have been where Garden got into his groove, but Creature Part 2 is where he broke any side of being generic. Thank you for watching.